there. You've clicked on another episode of Vintage vs. Reproduction. My name is Stephanie Canada and I will be taking you through a vintage pattern today as well as comparing it to its modern reproduction. In today's episode, just like the corny intro, we are indeed doing a Vogue pattern. Today we'll be looking at vintage 1934 Vogue pattern S3677 versus its modern counterpart 2609. Now, while in the past I have absolutely purchased and had all of the patterns all on my own for this series, this episode is brought to you by The Gasp. Now, previously you will know her as VSPC Galleria. However, slight name change, same exact person and company. And if it wasn't for her and her lovely company, this pattern video would absolutely not be possible. Because if you think I have a $275 pattern laying around that hasn't sold yet, you would be incorrect. So I want to send a huge thank you out to The Gasp. I will link her website down below in the description bar for you if you want to check her out when this video is done. Now we will be doing our usual go through of number one, the envelope. Really just kind of looking at the differences and getting a feel for both of them. Number two, the instructions. Now, while I'm not going to harp on the little itty bitty nitty gritty details, itty bitty nitty gritty, itty bitty nitty gritty, Focus. I will be just looking overall to see what the differences are from the vintage to the modern. And the reason you probably all clicked on this video, I'm gonna take the pattern pieces and lay them on top of one another. Modern on the bottom, vintage on top, where it should be. And we'll be getting a feel for exactly how they line up or don't. Mmm, shady. So I would say let's grab our coffees and take a look, but I'm not putting a $275 pattern within an inch of coffee in my world. Let's just get started with the envelope. Now the first thing we really notice is size difference. The modern one is going to be a 10 by seven and a half, whereas the vintage one is actually five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then we see the artistic liberties that were taken with the cover. <sighs> I understand that they're trying to make the modern one a little more palatable to modern audiences. However, there's a certain life and style that the 1930s original one has that is definitely devoid in the modern one. I don't like how they tried to give her more of a face or how they, they lined, they did all the shading a little differently. Although to be fair to the modern one, it's a little weird that on um, <clears throat> this one, she has no spine, like no, no shading whatsoever, no coloring. And at least this lady, she has a spine. So, okay, fine point for that one, but not for the face or the stylizing of the hair or anything else really. And obviously again, as we always see, they have changed the pattern number and there's no notation of the original number on the modern envelope. Now for Vogue's, I wouldn't say that's nearly as big of an issue, except for the weirdos like me that want to know the differences, mainly because vintage Vogue's from the 1930s, if you do find them are going to be very expensive as we've already seen. So it's not quite as big of a deal, but it would still be nice to acknowledge the original number as well as what the new number they've given it. Now we're gonna take a look at size. The vintage one is a bust 34, hip 37. And in my modern one, I have a multi-line pattern, which we all know how much I love those. We'll be looking at the size 12 today though, which is a bust 34 and a hip of 36. So we already will notice probably, uh, I mean, I would assume a one inch difference in the hip line, but really it's a 1930s dress. That's pretty much a like sexy sheath situation. So. Who knows? Now let's take a look at the back. When we look at the back, we're actually seeing some slight differences from our normal vintage patterns. We don't have at all any of the line drawings that we're used to seeing on the back of a vintage envelope. They wavered between doing this and not doing this. So it really was dependent on, was it a special design? Was it a couturier? How old is it? But you can see on this 1934, they opted not to do it. Then you can see does not compute. No him allowed? Well, that's interesting. That's a choice, all right. Then we go into the sizes, they give the length of the fabric, and then you go into your standard notations of how much material you need. And you can see here that on the back, originally they've given you a 35 and a 39 inch wide fabric. And while different lengths did exist back then, on this particular pattern, those are the only two that they're showing you. And then instead of giving you any other pertinent information, they're like, hey, do you want our pattern book so you can see all the other patterns you can't afford? The hustle culture existed even in 1934. Now let's move on to the modern one, where you can see the $25 price range. And according to ye olde internet, $1 in 1934 is worth right around $19.63 today. So 
a little bit on the higher side for the modern one, but not too shabby. Then we go into the description, the sizes, and then you can see here that they have decided to use 45 and 60 inch fabric, which makes more sense for the modern times and the stuff that's readily available. And then at the very bottom, it gives you the length. So you can see here on the back that there's no additional chart as to what sizing you're looking at. That is going to be on the flap of the pattern envelope itself. Whereas the vintage one, it's going to be actually in the instructions. That's enough of the envelopes. Let's move on to the instructions. The very first thing that I do notice about these instructions is that they are very fragile. And this one is the good one. She actually sent me two options and the other instructions are completely shattered. So I am being very delicate with this. That is why it is going to look more wrinkled than any other instructions that I've done. It's because these are very thin and fragile paper, and I do not want to damage them whatsoever. So when we're looking at our vintage instructions, um, you know how I always harp on the modern patterns taking up way too much paper for really like insignificant things or giant white spaces. Apparently the vintage patterns occasionally do it too. Like really, this instruction sheet is one page, no back, and actually half of the page is what the pattern pieces look like and their notches and the cutting layout. Mmm, shady. So see, even occasionally vintage patterns make poor life choices. So when we're looking at the actual layout, you can see all seams indicated by small perforations, which is really great. So that's going to be your seam line. So they do give you an allowance there. And thankfully, the nice thing about Vogue is that they do actually label like straight of goods. That way it's really quite clear on this what you're lining up, or at least they try to be. Then up at the top, obviously, we have the gigantic cutting layout. Well, that's, that's weird. So up here in this wee little corner, angled off to the side is basically a repeat of the back of the envelope. So in this case, if you were to find this pattern, say just with the instructions, and the pattern, you could probably make this because the back of the envelope is right there. Here's basically your finished look, and here's all your pattern pieces in the cutting layout. Huh, learn something new. Then below that odd little section, they have just a reminder about cutting. And then over here, we're gonna get general instructions. So it tells you where the hip measurement has been taken from. And then again, no hem allowed, odd. And then it just goes through like your basic alterations pressing. And then actually this, this tiny little bit right here, <laughs> right here, this section, this like third of the page, that's what you're supposed to use to make the entire dress. This is why friends, I stress having a period appropriate book for techniques and small things because they are not gonna tell you what to do in this section. They're going to give you the bare minimum steps to sew, mainly because sewing was a lot more prevalent. And so a lot of this is already assumed knowledge. So they're just giving you the Vogue specific instructions as opposed to all of the little nitty gritty. Oh my God, they even waste space with like seam finishing. Yike. Well, vintage instructions, check done. Let's look at the modern ones. Now the modern ones give you the vintage feel with the little flares on the side and the fonts they've chosen. So I do actually kind of enjoy that. It gives me the feel like, hi, I'm delving back into the past. And then over here, you can see again, they've done their colored front and their back drawing and all the pattern pieces again, just not quite as in detail as the vintage ones. And then it labels them all here as well. Now, why did the vintage one have 10 pieces and this one has 13? Mmm, shady. Okay. And then the other things we see is we've got body measurements. And then you can see here the denotation of ease and that they've actually given us a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Spoiler alert, the seam allowance is the exact same in these two patterns. Huzzah! Then we can see here, they're just giving you a basic like what to do, grain lines, folds, just really just breaking it down. And then over here, the cutting layout with, again, the large white space. But as we saw in the vintage one, they also didn't really do great there either. So there's that. Moving on to the back. And we're gonna dive right into those sewing instructions, which actually, there's still a little bit of extra white space that's not really needed, but they actually do the instructions diagram, instructions diagram, like I had wished that simplicity would do. So that's actually really nice to see that it's a, at least to my brain, it makes a little bit more sense. And they're just gonna go all the way through for dress A. Oh. Oh God, this is from the Butterick Company in 2002. Oh, 
dear. Oh, this could get real interesting. Anyway, next page. And then you can see here, we've got page three of three, which is very nice that they label that. But then we can see here, we got the good days and the finishing. Let's find out, do they have a hymn? Okay, so they tell you basically the same thing, which is to make a narrow hem. It looks like from a cursory glance that they're giving you some vague similar instructions just with way more detail than the 1930s one. So I do appreciate that because even the original one of that scares me. What's on the back? Oh dear God. <laughs> oh boy. I guess they weren't above uh, promoting themselves either. They just chose the entire back of the instruction cover. And now the time you've all been waiting for, the pattern pieces. So we're on pattern piece number one and I already see a distinct problem. It's arts and crafts time again, friends. Again, they have opted instead of printing it all on one big tissue paper that they're going to make you do arts and crafts before you do your arts and crafts. So we have Vogue piece number one, which is here, which is labeled as the 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 capelet and the original Vogue labeled as a front. So yes, I did dig over in my pile of pattern pieces for far too long to figure out what was going on. Now I know that Vogue bought back some of their patterns. I know this, this is an actual provable fact. Also because there is no way that you would be able to mimic this odd shape of a pattern piece without having the original for reference. However, what in the green gravy is that? I have lined up the center front of this piece and the vintage piece is smaller and has more distinct curves. Uh-huh. We have a quarter inch difference from the 12 line of the modern to the original vintage as in a sharper angle. And then it scales out. Am I missing the corner or is that intentional? I don't know. I could be missing the corner. It could be intentional that that little corner is cut away there, but it's definitely three eighths of an inch away. If you were to take the angle, if you weren't to take the angle and go back a quarter of an inch, that is seven eighths of an inch difference between the modern 12 and the vintage 12 as far as the angle goes. Then over here, <laughs> Modern's just a little bit bigger, friends. Just, just a little. And by a little, I mean two and five eighth inch difference. Not to mention the fact that the curvature definitely dips out. Hang on, I got want to stay lined up. This is hard because this is a very large piece. The curvature dips out before it comes back in. <laughs> the vintage is so much more shallow as opposed to this. So I guess if you want a more flouncy cape, then the modern would be perfectly fine. But if you want a more true to the original, you would have to like angle this thing in a lot. So let's go to the notches to give you how much you need to angle in. At the notches, you would have to take it in a half inch and then taper it down to the corner. Holy crap. All right, the waistline actually lines up correctly. That's new. So the waistline is going to be the same. However, the vintage one, it looks like, looks like they gave you more curvature around the bottom of the bust as well, probably due to the undergarments of the time period versus the undergarments now. So you're looking at a quarter of an inch different at most, as far as the bottom edge of the curve. Other than that, at the top, it's, it's pretty daggone close. So it looks like on the modern pattern, they've actually given you more at the waistline. It like curves out. So at this connection point right here below the bust, it then curves out to being another quarter of an inch wider along the waistline. Now, I wonder if I can line this up or not. It's such a mess of a piece here. It's a mess. So now that I have this lined up correctly, it's definitely a little different. So it really looks like not only does the piece get wider, but also they added an extra point of fabric down at the end for some reason, I'm sure. I'm not clear on what it is, but they decided to do it because I don't think that mine got cut off. I think that's intentional from the maker. So I'm not sure why that liberty was taken, but here we are. And because of that chop off point, the modern piece is one and a quarter inch longer down to that tip. Now, piece number two is interesting. So while things like the waistline almost line up on this piece, it's definitely not exact. If you look through here, the curvature of the bust actually goes farther up into the point before taking an angle down. They give you one quarter inch more through this back top section. They shorten it by a quarter of an inch as well. And they give you 
on the vintage one, it goes out to the point an extra half inch. It's just a little wonky. I guess it's the best way to say it. They changed the curvature a little bit because the vintage one is shallower in the curve along the front section, whereas along the back section, it takes a deeper curve. Again, could be caused by just general, the undergarments that people are wearing, and it's not that big. So at most, it's a quarter inch extra along the backside and at most three eighth inch too much at the front for the modern one. And it tapers down. And so by the time you get to the double triangles down here, you still have that extra one quarter inch to the back, but now you've lined up with the vintage front. So here's what I will say. The bottom section of this pattern lines up almost spot on, at least for where all the good days go in. Moving on to number three, the side back. Well, at least they're labeled the same. I feel like they've just messed with the proportions somehow, especially in the bodice, because if you see here, I lined up the natural waistline in both pieces and the vintage 12 goes five eighths of an inch farther up to the top of the back. At the very top, you're definitely a quarter inch off and you are a quarter inch too short on the modern one. So you'll want to lengthen it a quarter of an inch and then scale that up to the five eighths of an inch over here. And the ease looks like there's some more too as well, because all along here, the modern one is definitely a quarter inch larger the entire way until you get to that, basically that first notch. And especially around the waistline, if you're wearing the appropriate thirties undergarments, then you're going to want to take in about three eighths of an inch from that waistline because it is just too big. Other than that, it basically follows the back line. There's a slight change here, but what's really weird is if you line up the waistline, this happens to the rest of the piece. And while it's the same technical shape, they have adjusted it to be a straighter grain, I think, than this piece itself. Or they made it so that there's more room to the back. I don't know what they've done to do this. I will say if at the natural waistline you were to slash it and close it a little bit, you would line up quite nicely because if I line up the actual pattern pieces, it's, it's actually really, it's really good. It's really close, except for like right here, right? That's like your only spot right back through here. You're a quarter inch away. But for some reason they decided to kick the whole thing to having a wider, I don't know what they've done. Honestly, there's like pattern math happening that I don't fully understand. It could be due to the garments that we wear nowadays, but it's very odd. So if you close that angle by an eighth of an inch, you should then line up with the 1930s line of the original pattern. Piece number four. So let's say I were to line up the center back. You're pretty close. If you, I mean, it's definitely got more ease along here. The curvature looks pretty close to the same, except for one noticeable thing. Whereas on the very front piece, the waistline perfectly lined up on the back. It doesn't your waistline is one eighth of an inch and like three sixteenth of an inch. So for this one, the waistline truly isn't in the same place. It looks like the vintage one has a lower back is what it's telling me. So if I were to then line up the waistline so that it was straight, it's not a big difference. It's really not like if I'm being honest, However, what I do notice is that the angle again is slightly different. So the way the dress drapes would then lay differently because if you line up the natural waistline marks, this piece right here, you can see it slowly starting to just go farther along because what you're really looking at is you have one eighth of an inch difference here along the top and it flares all the way to a quarter inch of a difference here. You are very shy. There's an extra half inch at the point and that tapers in. Now, once you get to the lengthen or shorten mark, you've lined up once again. So you would just have to taper that in. And there's no real notch marking for me to give you here. So I'm just gonna run my tape measure along here so you can sort of see how it changes. And then like you can see here at the center fold line, they're an eighth of an inch off. And then it just goes cuckoo-cachoo all the way down. So something about knocking that waistline is really what you would need to do if you have the modern one, but you want the vintage lines. Because here you can see how different it gets. Like, whoa, hey there, by the time we get down here, whoa, what's happening there? Now, if you're concerned like, well, let's just line it up on the centerfold and see what happens. Okay, I hear you, let's do that. Then they're still wrong. 
if I am lined up at the top corner of my pattern, you can see here that the actual vintage piece is much more shallow. This is probably due to the longer lines of the body shapers that were back then. But yeah, you're five sixteenths of an inch difference there. By the time you get down to the pinnacle, you're looking at three eighths, which is right at the top where the good days would attach. And again, it's just one of those things that the vintage one doesn't give you that little pointy triangle bit and the modern one does. But you can see here, they just trunk it off. So you don't really need that triangle according to the vintage one at least. Gee, Stephanie, what's piece number five? Right, a piece that the vintage one doesn't actually give you. Now I will go ahead and double check the instructions and we'll see if it's actually in there. Fun fact time. It is indeed mentioned in the instructions. Along with this slightly confusing drawing. So that's one pattern piece of the extras that we found. Let's go look at pieces six and seven. Number six is the strap. And it's a strap that is three eighth inch too short. So it's perfectly fine in width, but it's too short. That's all I have to say about that. All right, Stephanie. So what about piece number seven then? I question you, what piece number seven? Back facing does not exist in the vintage pattern. This one took me a lot longer than I would care to share, but it does look like the vintage used a roll line technique instead of a facing. Well, Stephanie, what's piece number eight? Another little side front facing. This was another facing noted in the instructions right here. Facing pieces are facing pieces are facing pieces. It's really no big deal. Come on, Stephanie, is there a piece that's actually there? Yes, yes, there is. Piece number nine. Now, number nine is actually going to be your collar. And I will say overall, it's so negligible, the differences, that I would say this is almost perfectly traced out. The only, only like very minor is gonna be right along the bottom. That's 1 16th of an inch slightly larger on the modern one. Winning an actual traced out piece. Yay, we love that. So number 10 is going to be the facing for that front capelet section. And basically, if you make the adjustments from the front, just rinse and repeat the adjustments for this, because this is basically the same awkward shape difference as the first piece was. It's a facing piece. It shouldn't be seen anyway, right? Unless you're one of my dresses and then it might be seen. So now once we get into the actual bottom flare pieces, the first thing we see is that there's a difference in names. The original calls it a flounce front, and the modern calls it a godet front. Personally, I think they're both correct because they're both talking about the little triangle insert into the skirt itself. It's just a semantics thing. That's no big deal. What is kind of annoying, there's a part of me that struggles with this because there's a part of me that's like, all oh, the flouncy skirts. And then there's the part of me that goes, it's a 1930s evening gown. It's not supposed to be flouncy and twirly. It's supposed to be sleek and debonair. It looks like what they've done is they've actually slashed and spread it at some point. So if you line up this far side here where the straight of grain line is, it does technically line up. You're about a 16th inch too far down and you're about a 16th inch too, they went too far. But they did, once you get over here, they added more flounce, they really did. Which if you want a more twirly skirt, great, cool. Then this is obviously the pattern for you. But if you want a more true line, you'll cut it in the center of the modern piece and close that gap two and an eighth inches along the bottom of the circumference of the flounce. And then it looks like everything else would line up actually quite well. Now, number 12, you're also seeing that the vintage is slightly less flouncy than the modern one. Again, it's not by a super huge amount, but it is definitely noticeable that it is slightly smaller. And it is smaller by, I think it says 5 eighths of an inch. And the flounce on this back lines up in one corner and then it starts to, the curve is slightly lower. Basically, if you're using the 12, you'd take it to the 16 line. It's not really necessary though, because all this is gonna be cut on the bias and then hung and then recut. So I think honestly, you'd be perfectly fine using the size 12 for this piece. And now rounding out with piece number 13, it's not wrong, but it's not exactly right either. There's weird sections where like, it's slightly too short. And then it juts out a 16th of an inch past the notch. Basically what I'm saying is that it's close enough that you can work with it as is. Final thoughts. If I had to give this pattern a rating, I would give it a four out of five vintage pattern rating. Because well, while number one and 10 were definitely the biggest red flags and whoa, what is happening? The rest of the pattern was either pretty close or 
a minor change. And it does give me a little bit better idea of if I were to buy a vintage Vogue reproduction that I actually am getting pretty daggone close to the original pattern. Which, considering our trend on this series, is from me, big ol' two thumbs up. However, I would really like the pattern companies to maybe see this and think about how they're doing this from now on, as far as future reproductions go. So do me a favor and share this with a friend, send it out there far and wide so that way the pattern companies might hear our little squeaky wheel in this corner of the internet going, make reproductions more like the original. If you enjoyed this video today, make sure you're also giving it a big ol' thumbs up because that way it helps me out in the algorithm itself to be seen by more people. Do make sure that if you enjoyed this content as well that you're subscribing and turning on that little bell notification so that way YouTube can hopefully tell you that I have launched a new video. If you would like, you can also feel free to come on over to my Instagram so that you can hang out with me, check out my stories, you get a little preview of what the videos are coming, you get input on videos, and you get to see my really cute puppy who I definitely forgot to uh, put in this video, so here's a cute little video of her. You're welcome. I want to thank y'all so much for watching, and stay beautiful, friends. We'll see y'all next time. My hair is a freaking mess, because I need a haircut really badly, because I don't remember what she wanted me to say. Why is this thing so gross? Probably because you've been storing dirty patterns on it, Stephanie. <laughs> Are you really surprised? Probably just to fit the modern under garments. We'll be looking at Vintage Vogue from 1937. Four. Four. We'll be looking at Vintage S6 versus its modern counterpart, which I don't know the number of, 2609. Hey. Ho. Get out of the way. That's not a thing. Okay, anyway. Why does all the technology hate me today? Move you this way. Move you this way. Dear God, this is annoyingly large. Annoyingly large pattern. Do 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 -ly do. I'm actually kind of proud of Vogue. It's the first time. Ha <laughs> ha. Because the trash man is literally outside right now. Oh, because it knows you're recording. And it's trash day. Trash man, trash man.